you guys may have a seat. And good morning again. It is so great to see you all and to have this opportunity to worship together. It's Wednesday. How's your week going? Not bad. You got a full day in yesterday. Did it seem really, really long? I don't know. Maybe Monday just seemed really, really short and you wanted more time at school and more time in class. Well, we are in the middle of our week and we love to come together in worship in the middle of our week and start our day with Jesus, our Savior, the person that we were singing about this morning. So if you would bow your heads and join me in an opening prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings upon our worship this morning. I thank you for these students, uh, for their uh, spirit, uh, for bringing them to our school, and for this morning bringing them into our church to worship you. We ask your blessings upon our day. Amen. Well, this morning I get to tell you, I don't know if I have the easiest story or the hardest story. I've got the very first story of the year. And we're literally going into creation, the very, very beginning. So, like I said, it's pretty simple. God created the world. Chapel could be done just like that. And uh, we'll get back to class and we'll get back to our uh, regular days. But maybe here's where it's a little bit complicated. How do you talk about creation like the most familiar story in a new way? How do you make creation alive and important again? Do we sometimes forget Who created us? Do we sometimes forget the very original, the very initial part of the Bible? Because it really sets the stage for everything. This school year, guys, we are going back to the beginning. We're going back to the beginning of this book right here. This is my Bible. You guys have one too. Maybe it looks a little bit different. Maybe it's a slightly different version. Um, There's millions, uh, probably billions of Bibles out there, right? And they start in the book of Genesis. What does Genesis even mean? What does that word mean? The first book of the Bible, yeah? The beginning, beginning. yeah. Yeah, you know, the Bible initially was written in different languages, not English. We would not have been able to read it. That's why we have pastors. They know how to read those languages. But it was written in Hebrew, the Old Testament. New Testament was written in Greek, and so that word Genesis is a Greek word, and it talks about birth, it talks about beginnings, and uh, probably many of you know the very opening words of Scripture, in the beginning, God created. So the story of creation, man, I bet you guys uh, already know your stuff, right? Everybody memorizes the six days of creation. So let's have a little pop quiz and see how we do. What was created on day one? Shout it out. Light, right? Light. And everybody's got a little different version of the six days of creation, right? Depends on how or where you learned it. And and maybe you're hearing it kind of for the first time. But day one, the, the Bible says the earth was dark and so light was created. How about on day two of creation? Go ahead, shout it out. I always go with sky, right? They talk about seas and sky being separated. The water and the sky, the expanse of the sky, the scripture uses. How about day three? Uh, we're getting a little weaker. Go ahead. Shout it out. Day three. When I was a kid, I learned land, season, vegetation. That vegetation word is kind of difficult. It's plants, right? So the land and the plants and those things around us that we see. How about day four? This one's fun. This one's up, up in the sky that was created. What do we see? The sun, the moon, the stars. Day five. You guys might laugh at this one. When I was a kid, we called it fish and fowl. What does that mean? Fowl, F-O-W-L, fish and fowl. What is, what is day five? Go ahead, shout it out. Not animals, birds, birds and fish. Day six, animals, land animals, they call it, you know, mammals, sometimes people say, uh, and then something really, really important to us on day six, the crown of God's creation, human, mankind, Adam, followed by Eve. What about day seven? Is that a day of creation? I kind of feel like it is. And I know you're going to tell me what happened on day seven. It was a day of rest. Do you guys like to rest? I like to rest. Do you kind of need a day of rest every week? 
See, I, I almost feel like those seven days were created with a purpose of, hey, six days we're going to do work, seventh day we're going to rest. I'm thinking we should have school on Saturday. That would be our sixth day. And then the seventh day, Sunday, could be the day of rest. Sound good? What? You need two days of rest? I don't know. That kind of seems like too much. A little bit of overkill, two days of rest. All right, I guess we'll keep the schedule uh, as, we, uh, as we have it. So those are our days of creation. That's the opening chapter of the Bible. The story of creation is the first story that you guys are going through this year, and that makes a whole lot of sense, right? And what's in store for you this year? You're going to learn about creation. You're going to go through some of these early Old Testament stories of the Bible on a weekly basis. You're going to learn character traits that are tied to the weekly stories of the Bible. Uh, when we worship together on Wednesday, we're going to continue on with that theme. There will be some special opportunities to worship. You won't just have to hear from me every time. We'll bring other people up here. We'll bring groups up here to play music. We'll try to make it an assembly and make it a fun thing as well. But each week, we're going to focus in on a story throughout this school year. And this is our first one. And as you follow along, and as you do some of those things in your classrooms as well, you're going to be sort of reading the Bible as well. I told you on Monday when we got together really quickly, what's it like to be a Lutheran? What is a Lutheran school all about? Well, it's all about this. It's all about the Bible. And we believe this one fundamental belief that this book, the Bible, is the true word of God. And when you believe in that and you take everything for what it is, then you believe that God created us. Not only did God create us, God created everything around us. God created our world. And that certainly sets the stage for our school year when we consider that God created the world surrounding us. We talked Monday about the theme verse for the school year. Anybody remember just the quick little phrase of the verse? The quick little phrase, yes sir? In all things. And maybe you've seen that around campus now. And then of course, Jesus. The eighth graders will tell you Jesus is always the correct answer. So in all things, we think about Jesus and we think about how God is in all things. That poster right there had some creation stuff on it, right? It had some, some visual things which depicted earth and sky and water and maybe made you think a little bit about the days of creation. And so as we consider that God is in all things at our school, God is in all things this school year, God is in and around us during um, our entire lives. We weren't created on those first six days, but we are a part of God's creation now moving forward. I was reading and uh, Genesis 1, the entire chapter is on creation and you maybe have read some of it before. Do you know what word comes up a whole lot? I mean, I see two words that come up a whole lot, and they're really close together. One starts with a capital G and only has one O. The other one starts with a lowercase g, and it has two O's. You guys know what I'm talking about? The first one is God, right? Uh, God comes up quite a bit in the Bible. Go figure. Capital G, uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God said, and God said, and the Spirit of God, and lots of that word in here. The other G word... I think I heard somebody say it. Good. good. Yeah. Is good a good word? Yeah. Does it make you feel good? Is it a positive thing? Yeah. yeah. And so as you read the creation, the word good, very simple word, keeps coming up again and again, as in the creation was good. Uh, and God saw that it was good. And that's about the simplest way that we can put it when we think about the creation. God saw that it was good. And... God doesn't make mistakes. God doesn't create things by accident. God created us with a purpose. He made us so unique and so different. Isn't it amazing that of the billions of people around the world, everybody's different? Animals too. It just blows my mind. Like I can't even wrap my head around the science of how we're all different. And we've all got slightly different skin color. We've all got slightly different hair color, eye color. We're taller, we're shorter, uh, you name it. We are different in all the different ways that God created us. And I think sometimes kids probably think like, man, I sure wish God created me different. I sure wish God created me to be seven feet tall. Instead, I got to be seven inches tall. No, nobody's seven inches tall, sorry. That's pretty short. 
But when you think about it, guys, God has created all of us with distinguished and unique gifts. We've all got gifts. And, and you might look at another person and say, man, they've got more gifts than I do. I wish I had her gifts. But that's not the right way to look at things. Because we all have a set of things and abilities that God has given us. He's given us all a brain, a brain that can do amazing things, a brain that he expects us to use quite a bit when we're at school. And that's a positive thing. And uh, he's given us all a heart. How important is our heart? Yeah, it pumps blood into our body and keeps us alive. But also, what about the emotional side of the heart? The way that we can care for other people. The way that we can understand other people. God's creation is, is amazingly good. It's fantastically good. I can't think of anything better. And as we start this school year and think about why we're here at Christ Lutheran, why we're in school, uh, why we have to do what we have to do, we can go back to the beginning and say, we do what we do. We go to school, we learn, we, because we are a part of God's creation and we're put on this earth to honor that creation and to honor him. So we're going to use the gifts that he's given us to honor him in many, many different ways. Pretty cool task that we have to be the instruments of God. I've got one other thought on creation that uh, came to me. Sometimes it's not easy to talk to people about God. Maybe you've had to talk to somebody that doesn't know anything about God. Ever, ever been there? I've had a few situations. And it's hard to know what to say or the right words to say. I always think it, it's easy maybe to ask questions. So here would be a good question. How was the world created? You could ask that of a friend, of a neighbor, of somebody that you know, and just throw it out there and maybe start a conversation on how you believe the world was created. Because people do have some other thoughts and some other ideas about how the world was created. Maybe you've heard some of those. You'll, you'll hear about those in science class and, and there's a lot of theories out there. And yet we come back to the one theory that we know as truth. Because we believe the Bible as the word of God. And we believe that God doesn't make accidents. So right, very clear here, God created the heavens and the earth. God created mankind. We did not develop from apes over time. And it sets the stage for a whole bunch of other things that, that people sometimes uh, have a hard time believing. Um, God created male and female, two, two different genders. And God created a world that he expects us to take care of. And, you know, God also created or allowed things in his creation that maybe are not so good. Did God create coronavirus? Obviously a bad thing, and, and, you know, but God created a world for mankind to live in with all of these uh, things surrounding us and the nature around us. And, and so you look at the science of how a virus starts, and it's part of our world. And yet we honor God's creation by doing our best with the, the science available to us to combat a virus like coronavirus and not let it interfere with our lives in terms of how we feel about God. You know, that conversation that you have with somebody who says, well, how do you think the world is created? They might ask you back and you can just say, well, I believe that God created the world. And you might tell them about the six days. They might think that's crazy. Like how can you create a whole world in six days and it doesn't make any sense. And you can tell them about the book of Genesis and the beginning of scripture. But here's something that's really unique about creation. A lot of people say that creation, that what's around us, is evidence of God, evidence of a creator. I'm not much of a science guy, but I remember this science video uh, in the middle school level where they talk about crazy animals that would never evolve to do some of the things that they do if they didn't have a creator. And there are just some things out there that wouldn't make any sense in the world of science without creation without a unique creator somebody who put it all together so people see god in nature all the time they see god in nature all around us think about the prettiest thing that you see out there for some people it might be mountains for some people it might be um green fields um evergreen tall trees uh for me it's always been the ocean you guys like the ocean 
the expanse of the sea. Just amazing to sit there and look at it. I like to sit on the sand, listen to the waves crash. It just kind of puts you in a good state of mind. And when I see the bigness of the ocean, like you look out and, and all you just see is ocean. You can't, you know, you can't even comprehend how big it is. I just think about God and think about how amazing his creation is, the blessing that we have to live here within his creation. And I see evidence of God in that nature, in that ocean around us. As I wrap up today, uh, I want to point out a verse in the book of Matthew. So I just jumped into the New Testament rather than the Old Testament. And the reason I did is because this verse might be one that you guys are looking at and memorizing a little bit in your classrooms this year. It's uh, Matthew 5, verse 16. It says, In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Our task in this world that we've been placed in by our Creator, by God, is to let our light shine, to show others God through us. It's a pretty big task. And that is our response to creation. I mean, it's a happy story. It's fun to look at and think about how amazing and all-powerful God is. He created the whole world in six days, and we're a part of it. And that's awesome, and that's cool. But it comes with a responsibility, just like school comes with responsibility. So we are called to be evidence of our Creator, to be children of God, to show Him to others through the, the actions that we do. And uh, as we look at the story of Scripture, guys, very quickly... We're going to see how mankind has failed in that, right? In fact, next week, the third chapter of the book of Genesis, one, two, three, and we're already to the fall of man, the fall into sin. And that points us to what's behind me. It points us back to the cross, to the cross that we need, to the forgiveness that we seek from our creator that he gives us. Jesus, in all things, paid for our sins, cleared us of the wrongdoing, and helps us to be evidence of his creation. Again, what an outstanding task we have as children of God in his created world, and yet God's there to help us. God's there to help you guys all throughout this school year. I promise you he's going to be with us, and when we think about why we're here and why everything is here, we point back to God. Amen? Amen? Amen. I wanted to share that message with you this morning as a start to our school year, as a start to chapel. Uh, we're going to have some uh, other people giving chapel. I think Pastor Eric is up uh, next week um, on our chapel service. And uh, just a couple things to think about for you guys as you come into chapel. Uh, when you come in, you are welcome to bring your offerings up to the front right away when you walk in. Sometimes classrooms designate that to a certain person. Um, when you come into chapel also, we ask that you come in quietly, right? It's not a time for noise, not a time for talking to your classmates. Uh, when you're here, we ask that you, uh, again, remain quiet and uh, worship with us. And um, every chapel we close, uh, usually with some music and then with some announcements as well. Um, so we're going to do that. We've got some announcements uh, planned. But as we do this last song, if you did not have a chance to bring your offering up yet, uh, you're welcome to uh, go ahead and bring it up for the last song. Um, I'm going to ask you guys to stand again. And I'm going to kill the lights again as we worship and praise. And so uh, feel free to sing. Again, close your eyes as you worship your savior. All right, I'm stealing your thunder, but I got an announcement through text that I wanted to share with you guys. It's a special one. Do you know Mr. Johnson? A lot of you guys do, Mr. David. Uh, he uh, is our youth director here and he does give chapels. Um, although if you're brand new, um, he hasn't given a chapel yet this year. So maybe you don't know him yet. You will soon. He was sitting out at that table on open house with the uh, laser guns, Mr. Johnson. Mr. David Johnson is now a proud father. We welcome uh, Micah Scott Johnson, born last night, uh, 7 pounds, 12 ounces, 20 inches long. God's blessings to the Johnson family on the birth of their first child, a son. Another part of God's family. Really cool, guys. So, Mrs. Blaine. 
Thank you very much. Hey, it's so good to see you guys in here this morning. How are you feeling? This is your second full day. You guys feeling all right? Yeah. Getting a little more used to things? Yeah. Remembering which book goes to which class, things like that? Sixth graders, where are my sixth graders? Remembering to actually take your stuff out of the class with you when you leave? Good. good. I know, it's all new, it's all new. But it is great to see you. Uh, thank you for remembering to wear your masks while we're all in here together. That's super important. Um, at the end of chapels, we have to kind of remember some of this stuff. It's been so long since we've been together to be able to do this. We, we come together with a chapel closing. Um, this morning, we're just going to say the pledges together. Um, and when I tell you, I'm going to have you guys stand up and kind of scoot into the center aisle together. And we'll say both the pledge to the Christian flag and to the American flag. Uh, you guys have two more full days uh, after today of this week, and then you guys get a weekend, and then we get to keep going. And you guys are so blessed and so lucky to be here, and we're so happy to have you here with us. Let's go ahead and stand up and say the pledges together. Older kids, if you guys can help kind of guide the younger kids through this, remind them what to do. With the Christian flag, we kind of point up to God, and we say these words together. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the faith for which it stands, one Savior eternal, with mercy and grace for all. And then we go right into the, Amer the pledge, the American flag. We put our right hand over our heart, and we say the pledge. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very good. Thank you, guys. You guys can have a seat. Uh, we will dismiss by rows. You guys can uh, head on back to class, and I pray that you guys all have a fantastic day. Thank you very much.